balance your shields. Uh, there's a whole bunch of sort of like uh, power, heat management that you're all meant to be doing that's in the system right now. It's just like the interface is not particularly good for it. So that's kind of like having the key binding, uh, like, you know, sort of being able to set that up, that'll help. Um, and then uh, we're sort of working. There's another pass of the, uh, the HUD for better use and functionality, uh, which will be in 1.0, not 0.9, because we just, it's still, got a, it's still got more work to do. So it's, it's uh, but we're working on all that. So that needs to be, the usability of the HUD and the like system management needs to be better. And that's something we're focusing on. Okay, mehr Fragen? Ja. How will solar systems work? Will they orbit the planets? Will they orbit the star? Or will they re remain stationary like the data and freelancer? Uh, okay, so the question is on the solar systems, are they going to be static or are they going to move around? Uh, so we haven't fully decided on that yet. Uh, I'm kind of leaning towards making them not be static, that they actually have a kind of uh, orbit around the stars or whatever. It shouldn't be too hard to do because the way we're building our star systems, each one of the planets is a discrete object. Um, so it's not sort of on a static map. Um, but we haven't fully decided like what the mechanic of that is yet. Right now, the biggest thing that we're doing on a technical basis is that we're moving the engine to 64-bit instead of 32-bit because we need uh, much more sort of range in the uh, coordinates because uh, it's like all engine, like cri Crisis or Unreal, they're all first-person shooters and so everything's on foot so you don't cover that much space but in a spaceship you can go thousands of miles like that so you need a much larger map area. So the 64-bit um, is what we're doing right now to the CryEngine to change it for that and Part of that goes in with like where the stars go and stuff like that. So we haven't fully decided, but I'm leaning towards making them dynamic instead of static. Okay, Fragen, questions, anyone? Ah, okay, I'll just stay there. <laughs> um, how it will be possible to capture um, uh, other ships? You I get it? That. Will it be possible to capture other ships? Oh, yeah, yeah. Totally. It's going to be possible to capture and board other ships. So, I mean, that's part of... With your red shirts, actually. With, with what? With your red shirts. Your red shirts. Yeah, with the red shirts, yeah. <laughs> no, no, so we're going to have... The, I mean, a whole part of the mechanic is that we'll be uh, shipboarding and you can capture it. I mean, obviously, for a smaller ship, I mean, like a Hornet, you probably... It's not something that's so easy to board. <laughs> but the bigger ones, like a Constellation on up, and especially the bigger ones, you... You, you and your friends, or you and some AI, could try and take over and capture, and then, and then you know, it's yours, or you can sell it, or sort of go from there. Okay, so you can send like an, a an AI pilot over there and tell them, well, fly back to base, and then scrap it or use it yourself. Or uh, you mean in terms of you capture it and then say one of your AIs yeah. to send it back to base? Uh, yeah, I mean, I think that would be possible. I mean, that particular thing hasn't been programmed yet, but that just sort of falls out of what you would probably do because you'll have AI fly ships for you. So like you, for instance, could own five ships and you could hire AI to fly four of them okay. for you, stuff like that. Will there be a next, the next great starship? Uh, will there be another next great starship? Uh, yes. I mean, we liked it. It was kind of, it was fun. The talent of the community was pretty amazing. So, um, you know, I mean, there was work there that was as good as any of our internal guys. So, yeah, we liked it, so it was fun. I think, yes, we will do another one. <laughs> a pretty simple question about the Fight of the Tronauts uh, 300 series. Um, they said on the website that he has a custom um, uh, system of targeting um, from Will P or something. And what's the difference of this targeting system uh, and the others? You mean, oh, what, on the 300i specifically? Uh, no, the 325a. Uh, okay. The yeah, well, so, uh, so a bunch of sort of the uh, targeting computers and items and the flight control stuff, the, the final game of the design is there's going to be different, like you'll buy different items, and this targeting computer can track 
one target and this targeting computer can track three targets. And so right now, that isn't um, the, all the functionalities in there, but we're not specifically saying we only have like one targeting computer item. But, but essentially what will happen as time goes on, we're gonna be creating those items and they'll be more specific. So one ship will have like a, a simpler version of a flight control and another one will have make one that has a lot more ability to customize and it'll be like an upgrade path. But so right now what we're doing is we're just sort of getting the basic functionality in there and making sure all the modes. So like when the, in the IFCS mode that you can fly in every ship, pretty much you can do everything. And we're gonna add some new fun feature uh, functionality for V0.9, like full deg six degrees of freedom and a bunch of other stuff that will come out in two weeks. But in the final uh, version, like if you have the very base starter ship, you may have a more simplified flight control. And then if you go and earn some money in the game, you can upgrade it and have some more features. And the same for the targeting system. So I guess what I'm saying is all the specific items with all those details haven't been implemented because we're still very early, but that will happen. And the functionality is there. So right now what everyone's doing is testing like all the features with everything on, but then as we go forward, some of the items won't use all the features, some will and so on. All right. Have you already decided whether or not you will put any of the other ships in the uh, next great Starship contest into the game, apart from the winner? Uh, no, we, not yet. We haven't decided. So, um, uh, would you like to see some of the other ships from the next great Starship in it? <laughs> What's that? <laughs> the Talon ship? Okay. Yeah, me yeah, too. No, no, we, I mean, I like, <laughs> um, I, you know, we, we like, uh, I mean, I like the, you know, the top five or six of them were all great, so. What? But it's, it is a matter of there's a lot of work to get the ship actually into the game. Besides even, like even the, the, the ship that won is still another two months to actually get into the hangar and get into the game. Because there's a lot of specific technical setup that has to happen besides just having it in engine. Um, so it's a lot of work. So that's kind of one of the things that we've got, we've got to figure out who's going to do that work. Um, so if, if the teams that did the ships are willing to spend some of that work, then it's easier for us. If not, We've got to schedule it with all the other work that we're doing. Uh, in Squadron 42, uh, are there some unusual missions like uh, flying on the surface of a planet or on some big uh, space stations? So uh, you were saying Squadron 42 are there unusual missions like going down onto the surface of a planet and so yes. So uh, like Squadron 42 is, is gonna be so much more than what a Wing Commander style story was because we have a full you know, first person engine as well as flying around. So there's a lot of uh, sort of narrative and story that happens both in space and down on the planet or in environments that you're walking around in. So we have some, I mean, it's gonna be like a big space opera. It's really quite cool. So I think people are gonna like it. I mean, it's, it's, uh, it's kind of what I've always wanted to do on that style of our story game and the person flying back here, Aaron, is in charge of the studio that's actually working on um, the single player stuff and we're, we've got some really great stuff. So I think everyone will be quite excited and happy. There's a lot of variety in it. So it'll be cool. All right, and I think also a lot of people or some people might remember the planetary missions from Wing Commander 3 and 4. Yeah, well, these will be better. How much, <laughs> much, much, uh, much more detail. Yeah, uh, so uh, friends uh, and me, we have been p uh, putting a lot of thoughts in uh, the clan system. And we're issuing how far will you go? Will there be a political system in game so you can own whole systems? Or are we having to do this alone and flying patrol? Or will there be any design issues so we can actually hold the system as a clan, as a community? So, okay, so you're talking about the ability to control our own actual star system, right? Um, so we don't. Like there's definitely things that, that uh, organizations or people would be able to hold. So like, you know, an asteroid base, a space station. Uh, but in terms of like actually owning and controlling a planet, um, we currently don't have that in the plan right now. And there also isn't a way for someone to sort of really control a whole star system other than if they had all their players in that system and they were extracting bounties from people. Uh, but you know, the system's also instant, so it's not gonna be it probably won't be possible for someone to completely control something. Uh, but we are definitely trying to figure out ways to make 
uh, areas that can be uh, player controlled and players can fight over, which is why I was talking about the asteroid bases and the, the uh, star system. So that is part of the goal that we'd want. Potentially we'd have some of those down on the planet. <coughs> and then, you know, longer term, I don't know, maybe we'd have some kind of design that, you know, someone could fight over an area or control of an area of space. But right now it's sort of limited to persistent instances. Uh, V1.0. So V0.9, which we'll do in two weeks, will allow you to send an invite to your friends since you get friends to join you, which is better than right now because it's just random. And then the full lobby system is 1.0. So that will have lobbies and full leaderboard system. And that's when we call 1.0 and it's all complete, which I would think is probably about two months away. All right. We've got about five minutes to go. So okay. I think two or three, maybe, maybe three more questions. Yes, please. Uh, have you also thought of some Easter eggs? Maybe when you fly into an asteroid and you find an old Karate ship or something like that. That would be funny. It will be. I don't know about a Karate ship, but <laughs> and we definitely have lots of like little uh, sort of you know nods and Easter eggs. I mean, like I was saying, Arena Commander is made by original systems. So, uh, so yes, there will be kind of some fun stuff in there. But they're an Easter egg, so I can't really tell you about them. So. <laughs> yeah. Um, since there are. Um, so many um, of yeah, um, games in this genre coming out soon. Um, why should I prefer to um, play this game and not X Rebirth or No Man's Sky? Uh, <laughs> well, actually, I, you know, I like all the games. So for me personally, you know, I backed the league. Uh, no Man's Sky looks great. I backed the Limit Theory, so I like space games. So my opinion is, if you like space games, you don't want to just be playing one kind of space game. Um, so uh, I don't particularly think that they may be competitive, but I will say that uh, on the Star Citizens front, the difference between what we're doing and what some of the other games are doing is that we're building a very detailed universe and world that you live inside, right? So when you're in the ship, you can feel the ship, you can use the ship, you can move around the ship, and it's, a, it's, it's got a tactile sense, and you go down on the planet, and you have that same level of detail and first-person immersion that you're not necessarily going to be able to get in some of the other games. Um, and it's just kind of what you want, because there's different, you know, No Man's Sky looks really cool. It's a lot about, there's a lot of exploration, but it's also going to be procedural, so it may not be as specifically crafted to have a specific universe and world the same way that maybe Star Citizen would. But my, my answer would be you should try and play them all if you like space games. I mean, and then, then make your mind up. But, uh, you know, Star Citizen is the kind of world that I like, which is a very sort of, uh, constructed world that's designed to like have you live inside it and it feels real, it feels like it works properly, it feels like it's got um, you know, genuine factions and, and, and political alliances and the ships and the manufacturers, it all seems like a cohesive real world and I think that you have to have a certain level of like design uh, and craftsmanship to do that. You can't do it all randomly, you can't do it all procedurally. So um, that, that's kind of what makes I think Star Citizen special is the ambition the level of detail and the fact that it's going to do all these different things, um, maybe at a level that you wouldn't necessarily be able to do in, in some other games. But play them all. That's what I say. All right. I, th I think I'll close with a question of my own. I'd, I'd like to call it devil's advocate question. Actually, I've seen that you're planning to sell in-game currency for real money. And a lot of people reacted to this by saying, oh no, he's doing a free-to-play game. Everything will be terrible. So what are you going to do? Is Star Citizen going to be free to play? How is this going to work? Uh, no, no, it's not free to play. It's, it's like Guild Wars 2. So basically, you have to buy your initial game package. And then everything else is you don't have to pay any more money. Yep. So basically, once you get into the game, once the game's live, you fly around, you trade, you do missions, you learn in-game currency, and then you can upgrade your ship, buy a new ship, buy property. So you should only ever have to buy the base game package. And that's it. Now, we definitely sell, we'll sell some in-game currency for players because there's, there's, there's definitely players that out there, I mean, there's a lot of them on uh, Star Citizen that are older, they have a family, they don't have 20 hours or 40 hours a week to play. And so they're like, you know, I really want that cool ship, but I only want to play two hours. So I don't mind spending a little bit of money to have uh, some extra credit so I could go buy that. And so for me, the way I look at it is, uh, it's basically, that's just a, um, I don't know, pay to be lazy. Yeah. Uh, so you don't have to do it, but <laughs> you, you go, you, or you pay.
pay, you, know, you either got lots of time or you got some money and you can do either one of them. But ultimately, you know, you have servers, you have a big team of people that are making content, building new ships, doing new features, and you have to, there's, you're gonna pay for them some way. So the, our model is sort of the Guild Wars 2 model where you buy your initial package and then we'll probably sell, so we'll get some incremental revenue because people yep. will buy some credits. And hopefully that's enough to support the game and the universe going on. So we're not charging a subscription fee. So, and, and for me, that's what I want. I want this universe to go on for a long time, and we continually to add things and make it better, add more locations, more ships, more characters, more stories. Um, and, you know, who knows if the, that model is the right model, but that's right. the one that I picked only because it's the sort of model as a gamer I'm okay with. That's, the, that's my preference of a and model. Uh, yeah, mine as well, and it's a fair model. Actually, when I'm, when I'm saying, I really want a constellation, but it don't want to buy it with real money or don't want to buy the currency. How long might it take? I know we're we're far from there at this That's, point. I, honestly, to me, I, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know about that because we haven't balanced or we haven't balanced that level of stuff out. But I mean, the thing I will say is the thing I don't like in games is I, li I don't like a game that basically makes it painful to earn the money so you just pay money. That really annoys me. Yeah. But the key of you know, like a privateer or a freelancer or a elite was a, you know example of another sandbox style game. The fun is going out, trading, running the missions, earning the money. And so uh, you're kind of like losing out on some of the fun gameplay if you're not doing that. Now you may not have the time, so you may decide you just want to yeah. shortcut some of it, but it's not, it won't be any gameplay that you'll be missing out that'll be boring. And that's kind of the, that's kind of the idea, but I, I really don't, I couldn't tell you how long it's gonna take to earn a constellation, but I, I would say if you played enough during a week, you should be able to, by the end of the week, you should be able to afford one of them. I guess it depends how good of a player and how many hours you put in. All right, and I can also, and I can always discover Hello Kitty system and make a fortune with that. Yeah, <laughs> you sell your Hello Kitty, uh, like uh, flare pieces to other players. Okay, Chris, thank you very much for you're being you're here, for joining us on the stage. That was great, really. Okay. Thanks a lot. Vielen Dank, dass ihr da wart. Das war super. Applaus. Thank you, guys. Thank boss. everyone here that's back, Star Citizen. Thank you. Uh, and I'm sure I'll see some of you on Friday. So I'm looking forward to it. All right, thanks, guys. Dankeschön. Thank you. Vielen lieben Dank nochmal an Chris Roberts. Eine große Ehre natürlich auch für uns, dass er uns beehrt hat, dass er sich die Zeit genommen hat, hier vorbeizuschauen bei Let's Play Meets Gamescom 2014. Und das war natürlich nicht das einzige Highlight heute. Wir haben noch einiges in petto. Beispielsweise um 15 Uhr werden hier einige namhafte YouTuber vertreten sein. Wenn ihr gute Augen habt, könnt ihr es vielleicht sogar schon dort am Monitor lesen. Also Le Floyd wird zum Beispiel hier sein, David Hein wird hier sein, ungespielt, Frodo und noch ein paar andere Verrückte. Da freuen wir uns drauf, denn wir spielen Mario Kart. Der Telekom Mario Kart 8 Cup wird hier heute stattfinden. Mal sehen, wer so richtig gut mit blauen, grünen und roten Panzern umgehen kann. Die Herrschaften, die gleich kommen, haben mit Panzern eigentlich gar nichts am Hut. Das sind nämlich die lieben Kollegen von Wikia. Was die machen, werden sie euch gleich selber verraten. Für euch gibt es jetzt zwei, drei Trailer. Wir schauen mal hinter die Bühne, ob die Jungs startklar sind. Und dann geht es hier direkt weiter. Geht es euch gut hier bei uns an der Bühne? Das klingt aber nicht so gut. Geht es euch richtig <lacht> gut hier bei uns an der Bühne? Ja, Spitzenklasse. Also gleich geht's weiter. Zwei, drei Trailer für euch. Dann die Kollegen von Wikia und so allmählich machen sich auch sämtliche YouTuber schon startklar fürs Mario Kart Turnier. Die werden dann bald hier alle auftauchen. Mal gespannt, wer den Le Floyd als erstes sieht. <lacht> programmer in my studio in Los Angeles is uh, German. He came from uh, Crytek, and uh, we've got quite a few. So uh, co-founder of the company with me is uh, actually another German. So no, great technology, great talent. Yeah. So how many people are working on the game right now? How big is your team? Uh, we have about 200, just over 270 people overall working on it. So it's a pretty big endeavor. There's uh, three studios internally at Cloud Imperium. So we have one in Los Angeles. One in Austin, Texas is where I used to do all my old Origin and Digital Anvil games like Freelancer and Wing Commander. And then 
another studio that's run by my brother here in, uh, in Manchester in the UK. And then we have uh, some development partners in Montreal and also in Denver, Colorado. So uh, it's, a, it's a big team, but it's a very big game. So. Okay, so tell us, what are we going to see today right uh, here? Well, so uh, what we do, we're, gonna, we're basically, uh, we have a big event this Friday for uh, the community. I think there'll be about 2,000 people there, which is, uh, we did one last year uh, at the Art of Atal, 